Welcome back friends. My name is Brian and I'm back in the garage again today. Today, working on our KLX 110 project in conjunction with T-Bolt USA. Today we're gonna to be installing a foot peg cradle and this is arguably one of the best and most important mods that you can do to your KLX. And I'll tell you why very briefly. Basically, the foot peg mounts are not very strong in these bikes. So if you're over the age of about five, which most of these pit bike riders are, it's easy to go over a jump and rip out these foot pegs, you know, right out of the bottom of the motor. And this cradle basically supports that to keep that from happening. So it's a really important modification. Believe me, you do not want to go through what you would have to go through if you tore out your foot pegs. It entails like breaking down the entire motor, uh, re-tapping the threads under the motor, probably re-welding the cases or maybe even buying new cases. So. My friends over at T-Bolt USA tell me that all the time they get calls from people who have torn out their foot pegs, have to buy new cases, and it's just an ugly pros prospect you do not want to get involved in. Uh, on that note, by the way, T-Bolt USA did supply this cradle and some other parts that you're going to see. Uh, those guys are fantastic to deal with. I've been working with them for a couple of years now on various projects, a CT70 project, CRF70 project, now this KLX110, so that we've done a lot of stuff together. Those guys are wonderful to deal with so if you're looking to modify your mini in any way your pit bike those are the guys to go to they have everything especially like high modification parts so if you need something like that like skid plates cradles things like that like you're gonna see on this bike those are the guys to talk to so T-Bolt USA really really great guys so by the way this is a super easy job I say that a lot of times but I always like to kind of give people an idea of what they're gonna be facing when they do work like this and this is a pretty simple fix and believe me as I mentioned earlier the dividends that it pays are worth it. So you definitely want to do this job on your KLX. So I think that's about all I've got. So uh, you know what I always say, let's pick up some tools and go to work. From under the bike, remove the four bolts attaching the foot peg cross member to the engine cases. While supporting the foot peg cross member, lower the skid plate and remove the foot peg cross member. It's only two small bolts to completely remove the skid plate, so I recommend just removing it. All right, all the parts that we need to get out of the way are out of the way. When we come back, I'm gonna go over all the parts you're gonna need for this job and the installation. So we'll be right back. These are the four original foot peg cross member fasteners. You can see that the cradle fasteners are approximately three times longer than the stock ones. Shooting video under a bike is always a little tricky, so I thought it might be easier to just briefly go over this installation off the bike first. So this is the front of the cradle, and this fastener will pass through the cradle, then the skid plate, then the cross member, and then into the engine cases. The two bolts in the rear pass through the foot peg cross member, and then into the cases. On the back side are these monster bolts, two of them that after passing through the frame, thread directly into the threaded mounts welded into the cradle plate. All right, so now let's go through all this on the actual bike. Start by loosely threading the rearmost monster bolts through the frame and into the back of the cradle. Next, drop in the foot peg cross member and line up its mounting tabs with the bosses on the cradle. Then, loosely install the cradle's rearmost bottom mounting bolts. By loosely installing all these fasteners, the front of the cradle can pivot freely so there's room to slide the skid plate in later. 
So this cradle can be used with either an OEM skid plate or a heavy duty skid plate like the one I'm gonna use made by Kinetics and supplied by T-Bolt USA. But you can use an OEM skid plate if you so choose. The main consideration really is the thickness of the material. As you can see, the OEM skid plate is significantly less robust than the heavy duty aftermarket skid plate. And in fact, if you measure the two, the aftermarket skid plate is over twice as thick. To compensate for this differential, the best way to do that is by adding a spacer, such as these two washers between the skid plate and the foot peg cross member mounting tabs. So on the actual bike, if you want to use the OEM skid plate, slide the plate in between the foot peg cross member tabs and the mounting bosses on the cradle. Then between the skid plate and the cradle, install the spacers. Finally, install the related bolts. This is what I would call the budget solution. To me, it's worth the money to invest in a heavy duty skid plate and install the cradle and the skid plate on the bike at the same time. The recommended installation is using a heavy duty aftermarket skid plate like this one made by Kinetics. Install it in the same position as you just saw, which is from top to bottom, engine case, foot peg cross member tabs, skid plate, then the cradle. Install the frontmost mounting bolts, and by the way, I coated these threads with anti-seize. Snug all the mounting bolts in a crisscross pattern. Then tighten the rearmost monster bolts. Last, using the same crisscross pattern, torque the bottom mounting bolts to between 23 and 25 Newton meters. And just FYI, the Kawasaki service manual does not give a torque spec for these bolts, but do not over tighten them. The threads in the aluminum cases can easily be stripped. Finally, install the front skid plate bolts to the cylinder. Then sit back, take a look at your new cradle install. All right, pretty easy job, right? Uh, so a couple parting thoughts I wanna go over with you. One is that, as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, this is an extremely important modification for a lot of reasons, but honestly, one of the most important ones is safety. It is extremely dangerous to have your foot pegs drop out of the bottom of your case when you're landing at a jump or something like that. It's very dangerous. Um, separate from these pit bikes, I have seen that happen on like a full size, you know, 125 cc two, two stroke bike. And the guy who was riding that bike ended up breaking his leg. So this is a really significant and important modification, well worth the money. So that's one, this is an important safety thing. The other I wanna mention is that you're threading these steel bolts into aluminum cases. And anytime you put a steel thread into aluminum, you need to do something on the thread to put some kind of interface, such as what I use, which is anti-seize or something like blue Loctite or something like that. So you need something on those threads to protect them from, from stripping for one, but two, it's just the interface between steel and aluminum is a special type of interface, and you need to have something separating those two metals from each other. So that's just another thing. That could be a video for, a, I mean, a completely separate video, but just keep that in mind. And in fact, I'll leave a link on that subject in the description box so you can kind of educate yourself if you're kind of nerdy inclined like I am to learn everything you can about everything all the time. But just remember that when you put steel into aluminum, you need something on those threads. So finally, I just want to say thank you so much for watching. Hope you're having a good time out there in your garage. But the most important thing, get out there, turn those tools, and have fun in your garage.